Okay, and today I'm um, working on some on a magnetic feed lock um, to go on the grinder. Um, have a stack of plates um, that are milled oversized in thickness. Um, they're um, need to end up roughly half an inch thick. Uh, at the moment I've got them about three thou over for grinding. Um, I also have there's 12 plates and I have 11 brass plates to sandwich in between them. Um, now for anyone who doesn't know how um, a magnetic chuck works, Each of the poles on the chuck represent either a north and south pole of the magnet. Um, the chuck will not work, just turn on, if you only have the part on one pole. You'll get the slightest bit of magnetism, but very little. As soon as you put on, you can hear it, both poles, it's oh, clamped there solid. And I, oh, no, not turn it off, but. So, with a mag block, if you sandwich a layer of something non-magnetic, normally brass, um, mainly because brass is easily soldered, you can make them with aluminium, but um, you can't use um, normal lead-based lead solder. So if we put this so that our, our brass pole, just might zoom in a bit on that, so our brass plate is um, on the aluminium spacer in my chuck. We'll have a north and a south on the blocks and we can then sit something on top of that and it will short out the north and south poles and be clamped down. There won't be much clamping force, yes that was still on, on those because they're only sitting on either a north or a south. Anyway, so I'm going to set up and um, Grind one side of these plates, grind one side of these plates flat, and then flip them over and then grind them to thickness. Um, obviously I need to allow for the thickness of these brass plates and the thickness of the solder. The solder says between 20 and 45 microns. Um, I was just going to make it about a thou because my grinder's imperial. Call it a thou. And um, over 12 plates, if I'm 12 thou out, you know, it's not going to make the difference of a of being off a pole, so I'll uh, set these up now. Um, obviously, first thing to do with any grinding operation is to make sure the mag mag chuck is nice and clean. Um, generally, when I'm finished, always uh, clean it off um, to make sure there's nothing behind. A uh, squeegee like this for doing windows is really handy. Um, not my idea, but something else I saw on YouTube, and um, it, it's great for for cleaning off the chuck. Um, give it a wipe. Hands your best friend. You'll feel feel things much finer than what you'll see, um, and you'll find you wipe it, and all of a sudden your hands think like that look like that, even though you think that the chuck is clean. Anyway, turn this off. Well, these are all deburred. Um, at least on one side they are. So I'll go through. I'll set these up on the chuck and um, grind one side of them. Got the 12 pieces set up on the table here. Um, obviously, everything was nice and clean beforehand. Before I do anything, I'll dress the wheel. Um, I'm fortunate in having a, a dresser mounted to the side of my table. Um, it may not look it from there. It um, dresses just to the left of centre of the wheel. Um, the diamond is also tilted over, um, right the bottom left at the top. So. Um, all the angles are built in and correct. Um, it's height adjustable, so if you're grinding a really, really large job, you can lift it up, which um, makes it really handy. Anyway, um, when touching off, um, I've found when you're doing any touching off, you don't want any coolant. Coolant's about the worst thing you can have. Um, now the trick is to put something white, white piece of paper. 
assistance behind the wheel. Right. That way you can see exactly how much space you've got. And once you past the point of being able to see, use your fine flying feed. Or just take it nice and slowly until you hear the sound of it touching. I always dress dress wet. Um, do most of my grinding wet, but dress wet because I don't like the dust going everywhere. Then you just take it in sort of half hour. Half hour steps. Depending on your grinder, um, some people reckon that you shouldn't turn your machine off after you've dressed it. Some people do. Um, obviously, if you've got a really precise grinder, it will probably make a difference. Um, if you're doing really precise work, but for most work, I don't think it really matters. Um, Alright, so this just swings up out of the way. I like to do, just in case. Um, the reason to speed here. All right, so now we just have to unlock the table and touch off on the job again. No corn. This is where the squeegee comes in handy. Get rid of all of that. Bring the wheel down. Nope, still got corn going everywhere. Fine with the corn there. You can't really hear it. Um, you get that sort of crapping noise. Again. If you can get a piece of paper in there, a piece of white paper behind it, it really helps. Um, if not, the opposite. I put the light right on the uh, spot I'm looking at. It means I get a really nice contrast between the gap, between the wheel and the work, and um, the brightness of the wheel and the work. And then um, I've also yeah, removed that that was a bit, bit heavy. I'm actually going to um, lift that back up a little bit before I grind, just to see how we go. Uh, I've also um, always take out the side guard here when I'm doing this because I'll put it back now, but um, you know, trying to see with the guard in the way, obviously, is so much good. Always put those back in, you end up with cooling everywhere otherwise, and um, you know, the cooling will attack the paint. Um, now I've set my longitudinal stops, um, cross stops, I'll just take a guess at, that's what I normally do, and then see how I go. Uh, make sure I'm going in the right direction, and away we go. I'm going to use this in a few days, and um, it has to get a bit of air in the system um, when I don't, so it's a bit jerky to start with. But because it's only the rough grinding to start with, then it's not such a problem. Um, not having much touch there, I'll have to... that cross feed, there we go, we're hitting there. Put that cross feed back down again. Could be a little burr there I've missed, or a little bit of inaccuracy in the milling. Um, you can only ever consider milling to be Maybe within half a thou on a good machine. Um, certainly not as active as your grinder is going to be. I'm just watch my cross feed. Obviously, for those who have manual machines, it's not nearly such a such a worry about whether your machine is going to stop in the right spot or not. But it gets pretty much off there, so I just. I'm going to feed down until we go the other way. Put it half a thou. This machine is capable of taking a fair bit off, but the harder you push it, the quicker you'll have to dress your wheel again. And I'm not in a hurry here. Anyway, I'll grind these, um, grind these up. Okay, so here we are again. I've just finished, um, finished grinding this one side. And then what I'll do 
turn that coolant down. I'm going to park the grinder right over in that far corner so it's out of my way. Um, now the camera's probably going to be in my way. But um, I've actually, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there's one there which I haven't quite fully um, got. I'm a bit worried about my thickness though. So I'm going to leave it. Um, I can make it one of the end blocks. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully it won't move, move too much when I grind the other side. It's one of the end blocks, it shouldn't matter anyway. Um, so I'm just going to clean all that off, get as much as I can off the chuck right now. Always amazes me when you're grinding just how much. There is in filings to get rid of, um, as always. I don't have a D-mag, so. Some of you with electric chucks might. Um, I've even heard though with those that it doesn't always mean that you can't. Um, they mean that you can pull things straight off. That was actually quite easy. Normally they're, um, they're harder than that. They are. The one I measured before must have been a thin one. This is measuring about 502 thou. So I'm um, still got a couple of thou over there. Anyway, so we'll pull all these off. best thing to do is to slide them to the edge of the chuck. Um, when I first got this machine and ground the chuck up it was nice and shiny and um, it really annoyed me when I pulled things off and scratched the chuck but you know now it's got a few scratches on it and I suppose you just get used to seeing them. I only put that first scratch on a, a nice shiny, uh, shiny piece of steel it's always upsetting suppose you know you have to regrind the chuck every now and then anyway so so bad again your hands you see remembering that that grinding wheel is running at all times um, like I say I don't know whether it's true if you turn them off and back on if they'll lose um lose a bit of balance lose a bit of their dress the, but um I always just leave it on for the sake of it Nice, uh, nice manly coloured rack. Um, as I put these plates back, just make sure they're nice and clean. Um, the last thing we want is a, a speck of something in there, making one plate sit a bit cockeyed. End up with it a different thickness. these on. I don't know whether it really matters or not. I generally try and work to roughly the middle of the chuck. Um, I did a five corner test on this when I got it. I uh, sitting, sitting a block in each corner and one in the middle and ground them and um, this this, uh, this machine um, is from 1958. Um, it looks like it grinds within about three microns over the chuck after it was dressed so. Um, so that's my one that I missed that corner on um, it's quite amazing when you machine something in the mill machine them all the same you think they're going to be all the same but um, it's amazing how some of these um, were cleaned up well before some of the others you know, it just shows you how, um, how much more accurate a grinder is over a, a milling machine so, um, so anyway we're set up there Remember to clamp them down now. You'd think that um, I'd just be able to run the machine over at the same setting. Um, I'm always wary of that. I've, um, that's not actually touching. I've actually done that before and um, had it take a bit much off. Um, so always check beforehand, even if it's just a manual check. Make sure nothing's going to happen. Looks alright, so. 
We'll let it go over at the same setting. Um, and um, clean these up. And um, then we'll have to work out exactly how thick we need them. Um, obviously we need to get them ground so that we can measure them. Um, there's lots of different ways of measuring things on the grinder. You can take them off. You can use a height gauge. Um, the method that's mentioned in the, the, the manual for this is that um, there's a hole up here to put a, um, an arm in for a dog gauge. And um, if you set up um, gauge blocks, so there you go, it's touching there. If you set up gauge blocks um, on corner of the table, zero your dial gauge on them. You can then come over to your uh, your workpiece and see just how much more you've got to grind off. Um, I didn't get that with the machine. I will probably will make one up because it seems like it's a pretty sensible way of doing it. Um, I do have a set of gauge blocks that I use, so um, you know, I think it'd be pretty handy. Either that or a long travel indicator, depending on how thick what, what your grinding is, uh, would work quite well. Um, yeah, we'll grind these up and then uh, I'll be back.